We're going to first learn the basics of Matplotlib. This is probably the most important session for the entire course because once you learn the terminology, you can ask questions which are relevant. You can say, I want to create a plot where this part, I won't change my x-axis, but what do you call x-axis Matplotlib? Once you learn the terminology, you'll be able to ask assistance from either internet or from AI assistance, and generally you can code much better. So let's learn about Matplotlib, and then we'll start working on data visualization. Matplotlib is the oldest Python library for data visualization. It was created to mimic what MATLAB was doing. So the API is very similar to MATLAB, and it has evolved quite a bit over time. Currently, it is the default plotting library for many popular data science libraries. So if you use Pandas, GeoPandas, Elastario, X-Ray, all of them provide a plotting function, which is a much higher level API. So you don't, if you want to create, let's say, a bar chart, you will not use Matplotlib directly. You'll just say, I have a Pandas data frame. Pandas gives me a plotting function where I can specify the parameters and you'll create a plot. But that plot would be a Matplotlib plot. So you'll create the plot using Pandas and you can customize this using the Matplotlib under the hood. So most of these libraries are integrated and it makes it very easy to explore data. If you just say, I'm reading some spatial data using X-Ray or GeoPandas, I can just call plot on that and I'll get plot. My Plotlib kind of does many things. It can create almost any kind of plot that you want. Since it's been around for so long, you'll find an example of how to do almost everything there. Since a lot of the different packages support that, it's easy to mix different data types. Let's say I want to overlay some vector data on top of my climate data. If you're using Matplotlib, both X-Ray and Pandas, both will create a Matplotlib plot, so you can overlay with them very easily. You don't have to convert between formats, et cetera. This is one of the biggest advantages with Geospatial because you are typically working with so many different data types and all the libraries work with Matplotlib, so you can you know, take one thing, overlay the data on another. It's just very easy to do this. One of the biggest criticism of Matplotlib is the default plots don't look very good. It takes a lot more work to create more visually appealing output. And over time, the, the Matplotlib has addressed this using themes and other ways to make your you know, plots look much better. We're going to cover some of that. But other problems, if you use, for example, Seaborn, it'll create a plot which is much nicer by default. In Matplotlib, it will do a little bit more work to get the similar look. In Matplotlib, when you create a plot, you will get something called a figure. Matplotlib calls whatever image it creates as a figure. So it's a top level container. It can contain one or more plots. So it can create five maps, it can create one chart, or it can create two charts. The figure is a top level container. Within that, you have individual plots. Those are called axes. This is probably the biggest confusion when you start using Matplotlib is AX, IS is your X and Y axis. Axes refer to the plots. So when you say I have one chart, you will say I have one figure inside one figure, I have one axis. If you want to change something with that plot, it will change the axis. So axis in the context of map plot lip is a single plot within a figure. Let's say you create something like this. We're going to create this during our course. It's plotting four different SRTM tiles and visualizing those. So here we have four individual maps. They are contained in a container with a title. So this top level container is called a figure. If you want to add a title to that, you'll say, I want to add a title to my figure. So figure is the top level container. Each individual plot is an axis. So you'll say, this is my first axis, second axis, third axis, and fourth axis. If I want to change something on each plot, I will change that axis. So you can see each axis also has a title. So figure is top level container. Inside that, you have one or more axis, and you can customize each of those axis. In typical session, you will, the typical workflow, you will probably have just, if you create a single plot, you'll have one figure, one axis. But you can, for example, if you want to create a poster with last, last 100 years of climate change, you can create one figure with 100 plots, 100 axis in between, and Matplotlib allows you to do this. So you have a figure, you have an axis. Within each axis, you typically, when you create a plot, you'll have an X and Y axis. This is AXIS. So X and Y axis, well, another confusion when working with geospatial data, your longitudes are your X axis. Latitudes are Y axis. We said lat long, but there is Y and X. So longitudes are X axis, latitudes are Y axis. The 
each axis will have a label. So if you are plotting something, you have a label for X and Y axis. These are called X and Y labels. The, the tick marks that you get on each of those axes, they are called tick labels. So if you say, oh, I don't like this, that is giving me labels at every you know, 0.2 degrees. I want labels every 0.1 degrees, or I don't want labels at all. So you will have to say, I want to remove the X tick labels, or I want to remove the Y tick labels. Finally, the border that you get around your chart, those are called spines. This is the spine of the figure. Each axis also has a spine. So you can see here, this has four spines, the left, bottom, top, and right. In many plots, you'll remove the top and right spines. You'll only have this line for left and for the X and Y axis. But the border that you get around each axis, they are called spines. If you want to remove them or change them, those are is called spines, and you can change that. We're going to dive into Matplotlib. I have linked to a few resources, which I really like. I refer to them quite a bit. There's a really nice book on Matplotlib, which explains the history and the setup and the API in much more detail. So if you want to dive in a little bit deeper, you can review this free book. There's also a new project called Python Graph Gallery. Really nice step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this really production quality charts. So they take a chart and then break it down and kind of explain step-by-step -step how to customize that using Matplotlib. So this is typically my lunch time, time pass. I'm just having lunch and reading through those and learning something about Matplotlib. So again, you can use these resources if you want to learn more about Matplotlib.